Where are you going? Oh, no, 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 no. Welcome, Starshine. Welcome back, Starshine, to Amanda Devono Art. I'm Amanda. Today, we're going to be painting the moon because I'm obsessed with the moon lately. I'm always obsessed with the moon. I don't know what it is. I even wore my... Get these strings out of the way. I even wore my uh, Made of Stardust super large sweatshirt. It is super easy. All you're going to need is um, watercolor paint, watercolor paper, brushes, and water. I'm going to show you two different types of paints. I have these really sexy granulating paints that the pigments all break out of, and then it kind of makes that, you know, that moon texture. It really gives you a really natural looking moon, lumpy moon texture. And then also you can do it. You don't need those paints. You can use just regular watercolor paints too. Um, so you don't have to splurge on those granulating guys, but they're worth it. So, also mention, if you'd like to subscribe, that would be a super fabulous. Helps get the uh, channel out there, of course. And it's my uh, goal to just like raise vibration, spark imagination and creativity wherever I can. A little positivity. There's a lot of negativity out there. I hope to be a little bit of light in that darkness. So anyway, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> um, also another way of getting some light out there is I send out weekly letters. Every Thursday, I write a new letter and it goes out and it's just full of, I don't know, things that are beautiful that I've discovered and things that inspire me and music, art, history, anything, anything really, and uh, laughter, and we've got a fabulous little community over there, and it's all in your inbox. It's super exclusive. Let's get into the video. Like I said, it's super, super easy. It doesn't even take very long, and it's going to be relaxing. Okay, let's paint ourselves some moons. Painting La Luna with watercolors. Here we go. So I'll just give you first a little inventory of um, what I have here. Uh, first, here we go, spritz. I'm gonna wake up the paints. You get better pigment pigmentation if you wet them and let the uh, water soak in for about 30 seconds or so. And let that paint drink in the water. Um, okay, so what we have here is um, some brushes. I'm gonna use these mop brushes because I like the um, the coverage and it's kind of really loose and squishy but if you don't have those you can use whatever brush you want these are some different types of mop this is a different type of mop brush not as pointy more spread out um, this is like an oval wash which is nice because you get a little point anyway like I said and you can use I don't know you can just use a round brush if you wanted to Whatever brushes you've got. I'm gonna use mops. Uh, candle, that's just because I like to light a candle before I paint. Um, and we have, oh, tweezers, don't worry about that. That's for me to get cat hair, pick cat hair out of stuff. Um, two waters, two waters. One is for rinsing my brush and one is just to keep some clean water for wet on wet technique, which you will see shortly. And yes, paints. I've got some little pens. Okay, and as, as you can see, there's some mathematical equipment here. It looks serious. It looks scary. But you don't even have to use it if you don't want to. I'm going to show you two different ways. You could do like that perfect circle, or you can do a freehand circle. Depends on your style. Depends on your mood. I'm going to start with the compass. I don't know why. I've, I, I'm more of a like a free hand kind of person because I don't like everything. I, I don't want it to look too perfect and like, circ you know. I like it to have a little imperfection. It's the frayed edges that give it character, you know, give it its story. But, I don't know, sometimes the, the, the perfect circle is kind of fun to fill in. I digress. Um, so first, okay, actually, what I'm going to show you here is, I'm going to do it on two different types of paper as well. So you just get an idea of a different um, texture. They're both watercolor paper, but this is um they're both cold press as well so you can see it has more of like a texture to it so a cold press is more i don't even know if you can really tell on here 
and I don't have a hot press comparison, which would be handy, but um, you get a bit more textured paper. The hot press is more of a smooth surface. So this is slightly rougher. Um, and if we're talking rough, the other one I'm gonna do, the other cold press is actually called rough texture. So I don't know if you can tell on that. It's really hard to see on here, but hopefully when I'm editing, it shows up more and I'm really hoping you can see. Okay, here we go. Let's, um, you know what? Let's bring you a little closer to the paper for this so you can see better. I'll give you a minute. Take a gravel if you get seasick because I'm gonna move the camera down. Are you ready? I'll be gentle. It'll be slow. Here we go, smooth situation. <gasps> there we go. There, you made it, you did it, you did it, no barfing. Now I have to adjust my setup so you can see all the fancy stuff. Oh, I also have some salt, two different types of salt for um, some texture yumminess. So this is just regular old table, spot, table salt, and this is the rocky hard stuff, like coarse. Look, I even labeled it salt. I'll never forget. Look, see, cat hair. Don't need the tweezers for that, but I'll keep them on standby. Let's go compass first. I don't, I don't measure it. I'm not going to really seriously measure the middle of this. Uh, if you wanted to, I mean, if you're framing this, if you want to do a nice circle on square and frame it, you might want even sides, but for this, I'm just going to eyeball it. I prefer eyeballing. So I'm going to try and find center for here. This guy, I can, oh wait, I can, okay, squeeze this guy up, make a bit of a bigger moon. Ooh, look at that circle. Actually, that's pretty decent little center. Bigger on that side, but I don't know. I think, I think we kicked ass with that one. Now we've got our circle. Let's get some color laid down. So I'm going to use my bigger brush. What's this, like a six, number six? And what's this guy? This is a two. We're going to take this. This is what works best is wet your moon first. Wet your circle. Just paint it in. This is called wet on wet. Now, I'm gonna pick a color. It's gonna be our base color. I usually like to use two colors because you wanna get um, some depth in there and it's just fun, you know? I'm gonna use forest gray. Okay, and I'll link all the, um, the paints that I used. Again, you don't have to use these paints. If you have any kind of watercolor paints will work. Um, my favorite are these types of paints uh, that I'm about to show you because they are a granulating paint. So it really breaks out uh, cat hair. You see what I'm saying? It's blooming everywhere. It really breaks out the the pigments and you're gonna see it, you'll see it. It's amazing. It, it's like, um, really adds a texture, You're like a moon texture, you know, it kind of gives that natural moon, bumpy moon texture. So I got the paint nice and sopping wet. Now I could either dab it on there. Look at that. Ooh, sensational. Or something fun, just pour it on. There we go. Might need that guy. So now just dabbed. Well, there's a little splash. And that happens. So I'm going to dab, dab, dab around the edges. The paint is only going to go where you put that water. Now, if your brush goes out the line, I don't know what to tell you. That's just the brush's issue. But the water, as you can see, the water directs the paint, calls it, calls it over. These lights are so bright, I'm having an issue seeing, having an issue seeing where I'm going because there's so much shine and shimmer. You can already see it looks moonish. You know what I mean? Like it's, you want these dark patches and you want light patches. You want contrast, you want values, light and dark. You wanna see the light side of the moon and the dark side of the moon. 
And I'm going to leave some little spaces because, I, like I said, I'm going to put a second color in here. You don't even have to do that. This is art. You do what you want. You do what feels good. What works for you. And just let it happen. Most important thing, just enjoy it while you're doing it. Enjoy the process because that's why we make art. Well, that's why most people make art anyway. Because it just feels so damn good. Here we go. We're getting nice and light here. Give a little spinneroo. Spread some of this out. I don't know if you can see already. I will bring it closer to the camera to show you the pigmentation, the pigments breaking out. Because this color, this forest brown color, which is a Schmincke paint, and it's in their super granulation line. Um, this paint is made up of a couple colors. I can't remember what. I've got it written down somewhere, but this video is about moons right now, not what pigments are in each paint. Here we go. Okay, we're almost done. Okay, feel that it went out. Went out the line. That's okay, because really... See, I think secretly my hand is like, come on, girl, you don't even like things to be perfect. Why are you trying to stay in the lines? Just let it free. Look at that. This color alone, like, do you see the different colors in there? Oh, there's a brown, green, blue. Sorry about the shine. Again, the, um, there, kind of bend it for you. It already looks like a moon. Isn't that beautiful? It's so easy. It's so simple. Wet your paper, wet your paint, put your paint on the paper and let it flow. This is why the um, granulating colors are so great because they break out. I'm not even gonna move this around. I am gonna add another color though. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add pink. I think some pink would look really pretty in here. Here we go. Now I'm just gonna dab this in because it's so gorgeously wet already. Boop, maybe a little too much, but we're gonna make it work. Let's move it around and it will blend in because it's all wet. I'm gonna blend it in a bit. So see, it's going kind of like a pinky gray now. I have a mucky color, but it works, it works. A little over here. All right. It's always incredible how different it looks when it dries too. I'll show you some that I've done that I did earlier a while ago that are already dry. You want your eye to go move around, so we want to share the the color in different areas. So the mop brushes really hold a lot of water. Um, you're gonna want a little towel on hand. I don't even think I really have to do more to this. It just sort of did it on its own. I will add a little bit more. You know what? Maybe a teeny bit more pink. Oh, hey, buddy. My cat just showed up. He's like, you need some more cat hair in that paint? I can hook you up with some more cat hair. Oh, more pink, because I don't want it to all be this, like, putty color, you know? I don't know what you want to call that putty color. Tiny bit. Yeah, the mop brushes hold a lot of water and a lot of paint. So, which is why I like using them uh, for these moons. Well, now that's just too much, too concentrated. Move it around. Mm -hmm, move the pink around. A little more pink over here, a little more pink over here. Okay. There we go. We've got ourselves a moon. She's lovely and gorgeous. La Luna. Now it's pooling in here, which is fine because it's going to add but um, it's going to add, uh, what am I talking about? It's going to add, it's going to look different as it dries. Take a little longer to dry because we've got little swimming pools. But what you can do, if you don't want it to pool, I'm going to rip a little 
or if you don't want the pool there. And this is another way of creating texture. You can take some uh, paper towel, like you can just soak it up. And you see, it's gonna erase some paint. You can do it here, see it's white. You're just gonna pick up some of that paint and that will help you create highlights on your moon. The moon highlights. A lot of pooling over here, but I think I like it. I'm gonna see, because it's gonna create a nice hard edge as it pools around there. That is one way to get highlights. Oh yes, Mr. Darcy. He says hello. Another way to get highlights is to, with a clean brush, clean water, is to, and you want to squeeze some out because you don't want to soak the page again, is to lift it. You can lift the color. Let's go down here. So just with water, you're going to lift it. It's like erasing. I'm a way to erase the paint. Lift, lift. Mr. Darcy, is this your gift right here? Thank you, sir. It won't come up. Oh my God. The static, the dryness of winter doesn't help. The static cl cling of the hair. So there we go. We lift it up some. And you can dab your on your paper towel to get some of the color off. Go back in. And take some more out. I'm just filling in a little bit of that. I took too much out, so I want to fill it in. You want to make sure you're, you don't have any hard stops of color or highlight because then it just doesn't look as natural. It's like a hard line. So you just want it to flow, which is what's great about working in watercolor if you just want to f go with the flow. Here we go. Let's move some of that in there. And there is so much delicious dark pigment here. I was going to add some more, but don't think it needs it. We'll do that on the next one. There we go. Wait, wait, wait. Wait, wait, wait. I say there we go. But a little too light there. Boop, 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 I tend to like to dab because I don't know, like a, I don't want a brush stroke showing. I just want it to be blotchy. The moon's a little blotchy looking. Okie doke. There's our first moon. Our first moon. And I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna let it dry, and I'll show you again. Let's do another one in maybe a blue or something. Let's try it. Okay, you know what? Let's just do this one freehand. No, no math utensil needed. I'm just gonna do a free little circle. I'll use the smaller brush too. The number two. There you go. You can't even see that at all. Let's tip it. Let's go for a Prussian blue. Dab that. Oh my God, I really can't see because now I don't even have a pencil line. It's fun playing in the garden of the unknown here. I'll show you another way, another uh, way you can get texture. I mentioned the salt, but we'll do it a different way this time. I actually kind of like sort of doing something cool here because I lost my line but right here I like the way it's bleeding and it's a rougher edge like it's bleeding out oh it's cool we got a bit of a harder edge going around and then it bleeds a bit kind of dig it kind of dig it okay I'm gonna pick up a little more paint make this darker in certain areas this is where you can create your creator craters create your craters my gosh i'm gonna get a secondary color in there because i like to do it and you know what i'm gonna go for a bit of a green here we go get a little of that dab it in boo, 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 boo. because blue and green well now it looks like the earth more than the moon doesn't it oh well so we're painting the earth so if i'm not really digging this moon that first moon was sweet. Hey, Amanda from the future here, editing Amanda. Yeah, this one, you're going to see a lot more speeding up because it's a, a poopy one, the, the blue poopy moon. <laughs> you're going to see the 
full poopy moon at the end, I promise. But I just wanted to explain why so much of it is going fast. You're not missing any uh, pertinent details or anything. So, uh, and yeah, for the sake of, of brevity, the length of the video would have been so long if I kept all this in. Okay, so let's get back to it. Let's get back to the moons. Uh, there, see, <laughs> just to combine all that color. Who knows, when it dries, it might be rad. I'm gonna pick up some color here. I'll add some more because I've lost all my contrast with my mad bleh, scribbling. There go. Now, blooms. It won't really matter if I use the clean water or not because I'm using the same colors here anyway. And you can see it bloom. It's so cool. I love watching it work like magic. Boom, boom. A couple of blooms. They actually look like craters as well. Boop, boop. Okay, I'm going crazy. I'm bloom crazy now. So this is a little hard here. It doesn't look, you know, flowy. This is definitely hard. Brr, we got some color shading here. So I'm going to sort of try to bring it in and just blend it a little more. I'm going to remove some more paint, just move the paint around so it bleeds in. <laughs> now I need to bring some more paint in. You know what else I could do is uh, just uh, check this aside, do another one. But you got to make crap in order to make good stuff too, right? So salt, I'm going to use the big guys, the coarse salt. Wait, what am I doing? I got a little doop, doop, doop. Just a few chunks. Okay, my least favorite little moon. Here's one I did um, a couple days ago. It's more like Mars, but it has that coarse salt that I just use as well. So you can see the texture here and here. You can actually see the, um, still sparkles a bit too with salt. Kind of neat, little twinkles. So there's a little Mars. I'm gonna get the uh, bigger paper out. Or not the bigger, yeah, it is bigger. It's that same size we used before, eight by eight. But this is that rougher texture. Just to see, you know what? I'm gonna do the same colors I did too. That one, come back here, forest gray and pink. And do compass again. Keep it the same, middle is what, there? Yeah, sounds good. What I'm going to do is just move the paper. Sometimes when I'm doing the circle and then your hand slips, you're like, no, it's not going to line up again. Move it, water. So I'm going to spin the paper. Press down on the pin. Oh, yes. Oh, no, my God. Look, it did. <gasps> well, that's not going to matter. That little guy there. We're going to fill it in. Fill it in. Here we go, forest gray. And th what's interesting about this too, because I'm using the same colors, just a different textured paper, um, you'll see how different they turn out. No two moons are alike. That should be plenty. It'll be gorgeous, gorgeous. I'm just adding a little more dark, like a little more contrast. Make darken these bits with less water, more paint. So the brush isn't as wet and the paint is more, it's like sticky wet, not soupy wet. Um, and that just gives you a little more pigment. Dab it in areas. The other one is dry. Let me see. Let me see. Dry enough that it's not going to shine on you. So this is that other paper. Cold press. Not rough. Look at that moon. Oh my gosh, she's splendid. And this one you can't tell because it's too shimmery. Oh god, I can barely pick it up. Ugh, just wants to sag. Anyway, let's put her aside. And now what you could do also, if you want to jazz it up some more and get some gold paint, you can outline it, you can flick it on. 
and like stardust. Sometimes I do that with white. I'm gonna take this opportunity to show you some that I baked earlier. Okay, here we go. They're, the edges are still taped. These are ones I did earlier. Oh, here's one, the goddess symbol. Um, when I talked about flicking the gold paint, I did it with white. Looks really nice. And there's actually some gold in here. You can see it. Shimmer. Sparkles in there. But it looks really cool with the, the stardust in the background. And then I went over, where I went over the edges, yeah, just with some rough white ink. I don't know, I was playing. I'm not, I don't know if I like this one very much. I mean, the colors, I do, I guess. I don't know. And then I tried to get a little crater action happening. You know how the moon, when you look at the moon, it has those, it's like, like a, that's the best way I can describe it. it. Creates these lines. That's what I did with that. But anyway, this one is really pretty. I didn't know if I was going to paint, and I still may, around the moon, but hence the taped edges. But I don't know. I mean, maybe I'll leave it. This one's really nice. I really love this one too. It's like a marble. Anyway, so there's a couple. Oh, and then I did this guy too. So I'm kind of fun. Again with the splatter. So, you know, the crescent in the sky and yeah. So there's a couple old, oh wait, we got one hiding back here. Another little guy, small one. I can't remember what some of these colors are, but those are a few. Should we do one more? One more while we wait for that guy to dry. Okay, I moved that Rose of Ultramarine Moon out of the way, freshened up my water. And what we'll do while that's drawing is grab a piece of paper and I'm going to use some paint that is non-granulating. Um, so you can see that you can do it. You don't have to have that sexy granulation paint. I'm going to use my daughter's uh, watercolor palette. Move some colors in here. Move this little guy. And we will lay down kind of a scrumptious yellow. I'm never usually really a fan of yellow. I don't know why, but um, it's such a happy color. But this shade of yellow, this is my kind of yellow. This is like, I guess what you would call like an Indian yellow hue. It's so beautiful. It's kind of like a, I don't know, has like a rusty vibe to it. Oh, it's so pretty. Just get some of that paint off. Move this around. Here. And then I'll add another shade of yellow in just for adding some more yellow and depth. And again, if you're using a non granulating paint and you want a little more texture, just hit up that salt, use that salt and that will sparkle it up for you. The salt kind of gives it, I find it's sort of, I guess I can compare it to like ice crystals on your window. In the winter, you know, it's like a nice frosted fractal look. There we go. This is a rather darker, we're gonna have a lot more darkness on this moon. A little bit more water. There we go. But you can see it already looks moonish. Even without those granulations. Now I need more water. Move it around. And then once this is done, I'll show you the other ones are dry. And uh, like the first ones we did, even that blue one, I'll show you something you can do if you have one that doesn't really turn out the way you like it. Jazz it up in different ways or chuck it, cut it up, use it as collage paper, do whatever. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, here we go use a little more a little brighter yellow throw that in there just in these lighter areas a little bit over here and there's some down here and now blend it and these paints uh my daughter's paints i can't remember i'm pretty sure they are from michael's just a nice little paint palette and they're pretty decent I mean, they're nice little pigments in here. Look at that. You get some good color. Again, 
if you uh, wet your paints beforehand, like I did, like I sprayed the water on, if you do that, you're gonna get a, a, a deeper pigment. You're gonna get way better coloring than if you just had a, a dry palette and put a wet brush on a dry palette. And uh, you'll notice the difference. There we go. Clearly I went out a little there, whatever. So here we have our little yellow moon. Just to pick up a little more to give it more highlights. Go like this. To make the highlights stand out rather. A little more. Here we go. Ah, thinking of turning some of these moons I've been painting into stickers because I'm a sucker for stickers. I love stickers. Stick them all over my computer, all over everything. If you dig some moon stickers, uh, comment below. You'd be into those. You can make sure I order a bunch. Here we go. Okay, there it is. A little yellowy orange moon. And just like a standard watercolor paint. Okay. So now I'm going to show you those guys that we did earlier and let this one dry. This was the first one we did on the standard cold press paper. So you can see how different it looks dry. Get it a little closer. Ooh. And you can see those, all those pigments breaking out, creating, creating craters. And this is on the rougher paper. You know what's funny actually about this one before I show you the rough one? You can't really see the pink as well. It's very, very subtle, very pale. I can see it more in the next one, but it's very pale, but it's still nice. Adds a little blush. And here is the rough paper. So you can see, remember when I said it was wet, I couldn't really notice the difference in the texture of the paper, but I can see it actually more as it's dry and I'll give you a comparison. But see, pink, 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 pink. A lot more pink in this one. I quite like this one. So here is the rough paper and here is the standard cold press. So quite a bit of difference in the texture. Let's do that. Hmm. <laughs> I hope that shows for you. Again, I'll see in editing. Maybe I'll do a little side-by-side -side photo and uh, edit that a little better. Okay, so next is the blue one. Old blue that did not turn out. Okay, prepared? Ready? Oh, poor little guy. He's beautiful in his own way, you know? There it is. <laughs> not loving this one. Not sure where I went wrong with that, but it's a fantastic example of the coarse sea salt on there how it breaks it out see doesn't it look like frost on there so that is kind of gorgeous in itself like i like this little guy up here these two little down here it's really like an aerial view of maybe the earth from space not so much the moon but we got maybe a little bit of a storm system over here and um you got some deeper waters and maybe there maybe that's a shark i don't know anyway what you can do with this now if you want to jazz it up if you're like maybe i don't want to throw it out but i don't love it so much so this is a great opportunity to really let loose and if i wreck it who cares because i already don't like it very much so i'm going to take a white pen and make sure it's working and then the darker areas maybe just draw on it Telephone, mostly spam. It will be spam. It's always spam. So you could do a bunch of little designs like this. Maybe go up here a little. Yeah, turn it into something else. You get the idea. Here we go. So just draw on it. Do some little doodles. Okay, so that's all blue out of the way. And here is Rose of Ultramarine. How that turned out with that little bit of opera pink in there for a burst of 
a uh, burst of hotness. <laughs> it's like hot pink. But this is the how the finer sea salt or table salt looks. You can see the little flecks around here. But again, that color, right? Oof. Again, all the colors I used and the brands of them will be uh, linked below. So there's our guys. For four moons that we did. And then oh, it's dry enough that there won't be any shine. Here we go. Still a wet. I can feel it underneath, but it's not shiny. So you're going to be able to see. You can spin it whichever way you want the moon to look. Where's it darkest? Down here, down here, which looks better to your eye. Anyway, I hope you have fun trying to paint some uh, moons, or trying to paint one moon, I should say, because I've become obsessed. So I'm just going to be, like, my walls will be filled with moons now. So have fun, enjoy painting moons, be free, enjoy the process, and let the moon flow. Okay, I will see you in the next video. Mwah.